That is one long piss. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't piss. It is leaking something. Alright, what got crushed? Do the gas tanks leaking or the oil, the bar oil is leaking? I was cutting cedar the other day and it looks like it's the bar oil. Yeah, gas tank is, I would smell that obviously, but ah, yep, that'll do it. This was upside down in there, so yeah, we just been leaking bar oil out slowly from the cap. May help if it's tight. Yeah. Uh, I digress. Welcome to the homestead. It's been a while since I've made a video. Shit like this keeps happening. It just keeps happening. <laughs> But uh, yeah, if you're cutting cedar, applewood, any kind of really hardwood, and especially if it's kind of dirty, dry, um, a full chisel chain is more likely to get dull quickly and just get worn out. And you're just going to get really frustrated if you try to cut dirty wood or really hard wood with a full chisel chainsaw. So there's a few different types of chains that you can get that will cut through that type of wood better. Um, one that I don't have right now that I'll mention is a uh, round tooth skip tooth. If you get one of those, that'll cut through some hardwood pretty well. And it won't dull out nearly as fast as a full chisel chain. But um, there is also kind of an in-between, and that's the semi-chisel, which is what I run on the Echo 5000 right there. And that thing will run through cedar. I can cut usually two tanks of gas on a brand new chain before I need to really sharpen it. And then it's usually I sharpen every every tank of gas. I bring it in here to the shop. Um, I use a Dremel to sharpen my chainsaws. Now, I don't put a lot of emphasis into precision grinding because I go through chains pretty fast. The cedar eats them up, whether they're semi-chisel or full chisel, but I'd say I get about three times the life out of a semi-chisel chain that I do full chisel but I still am in the practice of sharpening every single time. So what I do is I buy these 730 seconds uh, grinding stones right here, and that's what I'll start with, and I'll, I'll sharpen my big saw first, and then once the stone gets worn down a little bit, I will sharpen my smaller chain saws with the worn down stones. And I don't have any issues with this method whatsoever. Um, I've sharpened plenty of chains from brand new to totally stretched out and ready to pull a link. And there's, I've never had any, I've cutting issue. The, I mean, this is the best way that I've found and it's fast. So I'm sticking with it. I don't do hand filing anymore. It's too hard on my elbows and my wrists. And I, I need to sharpen my chainsaws because I don't let them get dull. I sharpen them every single tank of gas, if not sooner. We were working on the 670, the old 670 here. Now this saw runs good. I just got it to fire up the other day. So I know that it runs. And uh, the problem with it is it would just always cut moon shaped. Like, and I've already put, this is the second chain. Cause I think it just, this, this little, this little bar, I don't know if I just, if I just fucked it up somehow, and now it's causing each chain to wear the same way. I mean, obviously I've tried different things. Yeah, I've tried inverting the bar, um, but now I'm gonna just try this chain right here. But this is a 24 inch bar, so in here, we've got this guy. I'm gonna throw this 24 inch bar in there, throw the chain on there.
No bueno. That is fucking stuck. I gotta get it out with a vice grip or something. I think I'm just gonna go with a bigger, bigger fastener. But yeah, that was like coming off. It's still pretty fast on there with this one. But got plates for both sides actually. Yama, Yama Biko Corporation. Look at that. Yeah, see? Made by the newer people. It's fucked up there, too. So, all of it's got to go. I think we have a winner. I was able to take this sheet metal screw, shave it down. That is, I don't need the self tapping drill on it. It made it just a little too long. And this should work. Brake cleaner. Yeah. Nothing's ever working. You know, because I'm always fucking losing these straws. I think I'm going to put them somewhere. Like this one, when I'm done with it, I'm going to fucking put it away someplace so I know where it is next time. It's not like they ever stay on the can. So I'm just going to hit some. <laughs> year outside in the elements on its side <laughs> it's not too bad I've got this open is I'm going to take a little wheel bearing grease and just pack a dab of that in there. been a few days and then like a year before that it took a while last time to get it going too Saw does run. Should be a test. Huh. And plenty of fuel. That's why I was running it open throttle, but it's still not firing. Um, so all I can think of is uh, 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 
Let it chill. No, I wonder if there's a vacuum leak. Nope. I gotta take the whole fucking thing apart. So we're not quite done with this saw. New barn chain guy and all that good stuff. fucking spark plug I've ever fucking seen. No sparky sparky. So I gotta say it's fucking gotta be the coil or the magneto. One or the other. All these new parts, and it still doesn't run. I have a part or a box full of 5,000 parts. CS 5,000 parts. It's gas fumes. <laughs> so I'm hoping that the uh, coil will work. And I can swap coils. Smell tons of fuel. Get plenty of gas. And like I said, it ran fine the other day. Which tells me ignition, because ignition is weird like that. It's intermittent a lot of times. You know, you got you got an ignition problem with your car, chances are it'll act up. It'll be fine sometimes, and then other times it'll just be all fucked off. Until it dies. That's kind of what happened to this one. Given the amount of hours on it, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I just hope that it's a compatible part, otherwise I'm not ordered on it. It's getting kind of late, guys. I'm out here fucking around. Uh, I got other shit to do. I can't fuck around with this saw too much longer. Um, so I guess here's where I'm at. Sometimes I intend to get shit done. I'm supposed to be cutting wood. I'm fucking around with these saws. Yeah, we had one of them days, it's just been like that kind of like today, I didn't really get a good early start on anything, and didn't really accomplish fucking shit, at least it was worth, that's about it, accomplish the shit for somebody else. Good morning, oh. Sorry about the sun. Good morning. Uh, so uh, it got real dark the other day and I had to call the quits on the chainsaw, but I was uh, able to pull the old um, the old cover off here. And I think I found the reason why the ignition coil is not getting much spark. I mean, look how filthy that is in there. That was just literally caked with oil and dirt and dust and sawdust and all that, which would kind of explain why it would work intermittently. Um, so I'm going to just clean this up really good and put it back together, um, you know, make sure there's uh, no grease or garbage flying around inside that, that uh, magneto wheel. And uh, 
go from there and put it back and see if I can get it to spark. If not, uh, well, we've got this one over here, which I'm pretty sure will swap right over. The only, like I said, the only concern that I have is that the spark plug line is not going to be quite long enough. You can see um, that this one is just a little bit longer. Maybe it's hard to tell, but I'm going to start by just cleaning this up, cleaning all this crap up around there and uh, try it again. Okay, so I've got my ignition coil all cleaned up and uh, reinstalled. I've checked um, with resistance tests all of the connections between the coil, the switch, the ground. I know my uh, I'm getting good resistance. I got about 2,000 ohms of resistance, 1950, something like that, between um, the end of the coil and the spark plug boot. So that's the same as the other one, so I think that's good. Uh, the resistance in the switch wire is the same and it's working properly, it's grounded properly. So it might have just been a matter of um, a dirty ass ignition coil. So um, I'm gonna put it back together and fire it up, see what happens. All right, I've got the uh, recoil assembly put back in there and one thing I had to do, uh, I don't know if you noticed before when I was trying to start it, uh, I was having trouble with the uh, recoil not retracting. Well, it turns out if these bolts are not seated properly, they will not um, move freely like this. Um, so what you have to do is kind of like get it a little bit snug and then just kind of work this in place as you're tightening it. And there's a shoulder that has to go all the way through the collar in order for this to spin freely so that it can retract nice and easily. So that's nice and fixed. And also it could use, uh, I put some chain cable lube on it too to help that effort because it was pretty dry in there and kind of rusted. So working much better now. So hopefully the recoil should uh, work a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the rest of it and uh, see if I can't start it. All right, so I've got it all assembled again and I'm gonna see if I can just check for spark before I put it all together and try to fire it up. This spark plug's all dirty now, but nothing a little. And the spark plug itself, you know, it looks pretty good. Like there's no indication of it's, it's oily because I've been having issues, you know, but Plug it in and see if I can get it to spark. Oh, that looks like you have. Can't tell. Yeah, I got spark. I could feel it. I could feel it. I got shocked. So I guess another thing to check would be the ground connection to the to the cylinder head here. Go ahead and clean that up so it gets nice good ground there because it's pretty dirty. All right, it's gonna fire. Pretty sweet. All right, so that's all it was. That's 
that's all it was. Dirty ignition coil. And uh, just lots of shit. So sometimes when your saw is not wanting to start and it's acting up, ignition, almost always ignition. You guys saw how quickly this thing fired up once it had spark. So now we can put it all back together. I think I have all the screws for this. So I think now we should be good. Sounds like the high could be needs a little tuning. with that that's how you rebuild and tune a fucking echo cs 670 made by the fucking uh heel ritz corporation back before they were taken over by the uh yamabiko corporation these old fucking gray echoes i swear by these fucking things man. so i'm ready to start shredding with this thing um one of the issues it has is it leaks oil like a motherfucker. That's probably what fucked it up. 
So it's kind of one of those saws that you want to use and clean on a regular basis. So a little blast of uh, brake cleaner, every few tanks of gas through the cylinder head and the, uh, the recoil there, but careful to get not, you know, touch the lubricating parts of the recoil. Or you'll end up with another situation like I had, but that's that one. Let's see if the 5000 still runs after I fucking filled it with sawdust. Hopefully I didn't kill this fucker. Still turns. Popped. This one probably could use a tune as well. to go with this one still. So the old boy did pretty good. Just took him out cutting here. And you can see that we got some wood cut. And this is pretty dirty wood. It's full of charcoal and dirt. This one was really dirty. It took this one out no problem. One thing I noticed that it was a little bit slower than the full chisel. But that's not a big deal. So the battery was dead or I would have filmed myself cutting all that stuff. So instead, I'm just going to film myself cutting down this piece here. There's a chunk of wood right here that I need to take out of this tree. And give me some decent pieces, so...
So you can see this is an oily son of a bitch. I will want to clean this as soon as I get back. But uh, it does pretty good. And uh, like I said, a little bit slower, but it doesn't seem to stretch the chain quite as much. And it still cuts pretty efficiently.